Jose, it's a 20 minute show. Let's get drunk. Yeah, Jose. Yeah, yeah, shot. What I didn't realize is that I'm the old dude on spring break. Like a little superhero. Nacho, what do you think of my buddy Dean Thomas? <laughs> You want to look like Lorenzo Peravia, sir? That's what I want to look oh, like. Yeah. He was 5'6 and full of muscles and pasta. But I told Max Sarah, whichever kid wins this fight, tell him they're in. Oh! Let's fucking go! We took him out in the first round, and it was a beautiful thing. You're fucking in. That's a wrap! That's a wrap! Hey, I'm UFC President Dana White. And we're always looking for up-and-coming talent to sign. Back in the day, I used to scout the world looking for new talent. But I haven't done that in years. Now, I'm back on the road, I'm looking for fighters, and I'm bringing two of my favorite people with me. Matt Serra won the Ultimate Fighter, and he also became the welterweight champion of the world. He now trains some of the best fighters in the sport out of his gym in Long Island, New York. Dean Thomas is a former UFC fighter and was on the Ultimate Fighter season four with Matt Serra. He's beat some of the best guys in the sport. Sarah, Guida, Pulver. He's with the American top team, and he's a black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And he's a lot of fun to hang out with. We're checking out the best restaurants, the coolest places to hang out, having fun, and then going to see some fights. I'm looking for the next Ronda Rousey, the next Robbie Lawler, the next Conor McGregor. I'm looking for future champions. And I'm willing to go to any show, anywhere in the world to find them. We're visiting Memphis, Tennessee. The three of us are gonna go learn how to sing the blues. We're gonna cook some fried chicken, and we'll be wrestling with Jerry the King Lawler. Then we're checking out an incredible card put on by V3 Fights. I really like Memphis. Memphis is a fun city. There's tons of great food and uh, a lot of cool places to hang out. And Beale Street, is definitely a lot of fun. I really like the town, man. It's very colorful, and everything's bright at night. It's got all kinds of stuff going on. It's got like all these different bars and restaurants and like food joints and people and a lot of black people, which made me feel comfortable. So yeah, I was good on Beale Street. I saw those old ladies going after you, Dean Thomas. Well, you know what I'm saying, like, listen. I attract cute cougars, you know what I mean? We're walking up and down Beale Street, checking things out, and there's these guys doing flips up and down the street. What's the most you've ever done, though? Right, 25 25? And I told him I'll give him 300 bucks if he could do 20 flips. Holy shit! That was so badass. <laughs> <laughs> then, the guys say they want me, Matt, and Dean to stand together, and the guy's gonna flip over us. And I was nervous as hell because, like, when you saw these dudes, one of them looked like he was in shape. The other dude didn't really look like he could flip, but I had to take his word for it. You sure about this? No. This brother got acid washed <laughs> jeans on. And, uh... <laughs> I mean, he had the damn jeans that Will Smith had on and the Fresh Prince. I made sure I got in the middle. You don't want to be in the front. You definitely don't want to be in the back. So I was in a good spot. Oh, shit. Ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, Dean Thomas. I want a carriage ride. They got horses here? Oh, we'll find one. Oh, look. So eventually, we ended up in a carriage because me and Matt for some reason, I don't know what it is, whenever we hang out, we always have to have our bromance moment. Honey bun. It's kind of the thing, that's what these two do. I mean, I don't care. I'm secure with myself. I'll go for a carriage ride with my buddy. How are you? Don't judge us. Everything is okay. How are you? I think I just lost my black card. It was like Cinderella. We was in a carriage and we was going around and the horse was named French Fry. Is that French, French Fry? Fry? My guy, French Fry. I 
you fucking spit it's with your goddamn it's, it's not me. It's not me. It's not you. It's the horse. Drop, it's drop. the horse. Dude, really? It's the horse. Dude, you've been spit. Can you drink the goddamn meal? It's the horse. It's one horsepower. Come on now. Let me do the jokes there, Coach Ryder. <laughs> I'm only kidding, buddy. Don't fucking steer us into traffic. Who's watching the road, Todd? French fry. Oh, OK. It was a cool moment for me and Matt to get to bond even further. Better get back soon before this thing turns into a pumpkin. So we met this blues artist named Eric Hughes, and we went in and he was showing us the blues, telling us the history of the blues, and teaching us how to write a blues song. Hey, Dana, Eric. Pleasure. Nice to, Good meet, to you. meet you. He had these guitars and he had the little gold guitar. Then he gave me the little Bobo wooden guitar that was all light, looked like a little Fisher Price guitar. But this dude was bad, man. Like, he was really good at what he did, and I had a good time learning from him. How do we get started about writing for ourselves? If you're writing about, you know, your life, what you do, you can say like, a, down on the mat, gonna knock you flat. Yeah, you ain't all that down on the mat. Or, you know, something. <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah, let's get with this. Right about it. <laughs> down on the mat. Yeah. That's not fair. I knocked you flat. <laughs> that could be the chorus, you know. Matt got fat. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that part of anything? That's nothing to do with the story. <laughs> well, thanks for taking the time for, uh, with us tonight and for tomorrow. Man, we're yeah. we're going to go get together and write a real shitty song that will ruin your entire reputation. Yeah, we apologize in advance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But pleasure to meet you, man, and man, thank you very cool. much. It was way cool. I had fun with you guys. Yeah, nice to meet you, man. man yeah, for sure, it. man. I'm gonna give, give him his back guitar back. back. <laughs> <laughs> Wrestling is huge in Memphis, huge. I used to watch pro wrestling a little bit, you know, like way back in the day, like Tony Atlas, and Jimmy Superfly Snooker and all them dudes. The biggest star out of Memphis is Jerry the King Lawler. We get down to Memphis, we agree to do this wrestling match at his place, but first we gotta train. These guys are gonna <laughs> learn how to wrestle. Yeah, I'm gonna be something. the goofy manager. <laughs> okay. Ready? We gotta go in and learn how to wrestle. Put me in, coach. And, you know, he's basically showing us the ropes, so to speak, about professional wrestling. Boom. The do's, the don'ts, the proper technique. It's really weird, man. You wanna make your, your lockup snug. Yeah. You hear, you hear so the people can actually hear it. Yeah, Sarah's learning how to throw the pro wrestling punch, and uh, for some reason, he just wasn't getting it. You got the punch, like, not correctly. Like, you can't punch correctly, you can't do things that you would normally do as a fighter because it's all theater. We're gonna it ruin your that. reputation tonight. It is. <laughs> now we got Curly and the Three Stooges uh -huh. here. I'm not getting the full picture. I want you to Listen. show him how to sell the punch. Please okay? show me on Dean, though. Don't show okay. me on me. No, wait a minute. Grab him by the head, right? right? And then He's wide open for wind you. it up and then land the punch. That was better, yeah, though. That was good. Excuse me. for 30 minutes. <laughs> My fake wrestling punch was way better than his fake wrestling punch. Me and Matt, we're used to like really trying to beat people up, but the goal in wrestling is to protect your partner. So we had to learn how to do all that. And he's teaching us how to wrestle. <laughs> and he punched me in a goddamn lip. Pull your shirt down, you're losing friends. Goddamn Jerry Lawler. You know, while I'm trying to coach you guys into, into what we're to expect in a wrestling match, uh, we also want to we also want to tell the story or paint the picture that you guys have fought each other. You're, yeah. you're not friends and you're not going to be on the same page. And let me try to I'll try to keep order between you two. Not a lot of guys. pretending there. There you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Once he gives you a clothesline, yeah, you know, yeah. take time to let him go to him and give him a clothesline. Yeah. By then you're up again. You're going to cover him want, and then Dana. You're, you're just you, yeah. There you go. And then here comes Maria now. There. All right. Oh, no. Now, Dana, there, you need to stand up and just kind of wander around like, what in the, what are you trying to do, right? The, uh, you know what the crowd will respond the best to? You putting me on my Over the show. show. <laughs> okay. Done. We had like one minute. Okay, so it was a little longer than that. We had like one hour to learn how to wrestle. And these guys, they're doing it how many shows a, a week? How many shows a day? They're talking about how this is going to go down, and it's no problem for them.
are going to beat up some Ultimate Fighters. Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, here's Dana White. So the wrestlers that were there were Derek King, Maria Starr, and Dustin Starr. And basically, Jerry the King Lawler split us up with teams. So I was the manager of Matt and Derek, and she was the manager of Dean and Dustin. Let's keep it clean. All right, let's go. Ring it. Ring it. So myself and Dean Thomas had to grapple these other guys and then grapple each other and then get tagged in, get tagged out, fucking suplex people. Oh. Wait a minute. Don't hit it with the ball. Me, guys. He does have great hair, doesn't even move. Dana's role for the wrestling match was to stand there and talk shit. Shut up! And he did a good job of that. Hey, go back in your corner and shut up! Oh, that's right. So myself and Dean Thomas, I was gonna take him down and just control him and then maybe take his back and he'd get to the ropes. And then we did nothing, nothing like we practiced. And at one point we're back, we're locked up. I'm like, what the hell are we doing? I'm looking at Matt like, I have no idea. At one point, Somebody in the crowd yells, I don't want to watch real fighting. <laughs> Dean and Matt actually had to memorize the wrestling, when to tag, when to go in. There was not a lot of prep for it. And considering that, they did an incredible job. Mine was the easiest role. All I had to do was interact with her. Get the hell out of here. Get out of here. You're not supposed to be in here. Yell at her. That's it for me. I mean, my mine was pretty easy. And then at the end, when I cheat for the pin, she's gonna jump on my back and go crazy. Matt, the Terra Sarah, and Derek, by God, greater than great king. It was fun. I had a good time. Matt Sarah, Derek King, the president of UFC, Dana White, and Hall of Famer, Jerry, the King Lawler. I gained a newfound respect for all pro wrestlers because their theatrics, their ability to choreograph these scenes and these moves and to do it and to play with the crowd and get the crowd involved and to tell the story of the wrestling match, it worked out perfectly. You all did great, man. That was really good. If you think about how much time we spent on all this stuff, when Dean Thomas scooped you up and slammed, that was great, man. That was great. That was really good, Dean. That was fun. Now we're gonna go sing the blues. Now we're gonna sing the blues. Well, I feel better about singing the blues now. Like it can't be any worse than this. When you do the blues, it's gotta be personal to you. So I wanted to have my own flavor to it and make this personal to me. So I wrote my own song. Did you really write it? Let me see. Easy little Wayne. We had no time to, to write some shit, man. In typical. Dana fashion, I cheated again. He goes, look, screw it. <laughs> he made a couple of phone calls. And Gary Clark Jr. wrote my song for me. And then this one was written by the guy who did all the music for Moana. This is how I got through high school, by the way. <laughs> yeah? I'm getting it. I don't know I'm how not. confident I'm gonna be when we walk in there, but I'm feeling it right now. There's only two reasons you wanna go up and sing in front of a bunch of people. You're either really talented, or you're a fucking nutball. Hello, Memphis! <laughs> Adam Hunter from the MMA Roasted Podcast, he wrote some uh, some gems for me, man. My name is Matt Serra, and I got the blues. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm short, chubby, and bald, and I lost to Matt Hughes. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Oh, Dean Thomas, everybody. Here he comes. I'm drowning in tears. While I'm down in these beers. Yeah, y'all know what I mean. And I gained 30 pounds just in the last motherfucking year. Yeah, I got the blues. I got the blues. And it's gonna get worse when Dana White comes up. Come on, Dana, let's go. I was really nervous for Dana because I know how competitive Dana is. 
I'm not into singing. I'm not into karaoke. I don't sing in the shower. I don't sing anywhere. Okay, Is this one on? Hi. No? I blew it already. <laughs> Well, the nurse said, on the day I was born. Well, the nurse said, on the day I was born. It was similar to if you're cornering a fighter and you see him have a tough first round where he's staggering and he's hurt. Me and Thomas was scared for him. I'm a bad man. He's fucking dying. You know what you tell. Fuck. And then all of a sudden he started getting his legs. He started building his confidence. I'm rolling through Memphis, looking for the baddest one around. You got your rhythm. You found your rhythm. Yeah, thank you guys very much. We suck. Hey, let's take a bow. Thank you very much. I already put you through that, everybody. Sorry. Thank you, sir. Originally, when we were going down there, we wanted to go down to St. Jude's Children's Hospital. I brought a bunch of stuff from the UFC to bring to give to the kids, and obviously, I was gonna write a check and make a donation. They turned us down. They denied us. They didn't wanna be affiliated with the UFC. We ended up going to a local charity there in Memphis. These guys help inner city kids get off the streets, so me and Matt went to the GIF program. GIF stands for Juvenile Intervention and Faith-Based Follow-Up. We've been around since 2003. We work with uh, Court Assigned Youth. We have a 16-week program. We talk to them about gang intervention. We talk to them about their head, their heart, their health, hobbies, higher ability. So, you know, we got a tour of the, the place, and it looks like a cool place for the kids to hang out. I played some air hockey with some kid that kicked my ass at it. We had a, it was, it was a, it was a nice little setup. You know, I'm looking at these kids, and you know, they're all the same age as my son. And I know the statistics of like young black youth. One in every three will have been in prison at some time in their life. And I can see that they're a little standoffish, and they don't trust us, and they don't trust me. And I didn't really know how to get through to them in such a short amount of time, so I was a little thrown off from that. And I wish I could have got a chance to spend more time with them and get to know them and talk to them and help them out a little bit better. You know, the UFC is going to uh, donate $10,000. Oh, man. And awesome. also, thank you. Also, thank you. also, wow. uh, Dana White is going to personally give a ten, out of the $10,000 check. Wow. So that'll be $20,000 for you guys. Great. Awesome. So, uh, thank you. We've been donating since the day we opened this company. And um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was just weird to be turned down by St. Jude's. To, 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 to give to the children. So we went to a legendary place called Gus's Fried Chicken in Memphis. The owner's name is Wendy. She was awesome. How long have you been open? Since November 2001 in this location, but the recipe has been around since 1953. Let's make some chicken. Please. Tiny little kitchen, tiny little spot, but the place is packed. There's a line out front, and they showed us how they make fried chicken. What we're working on here is Gus's world famous fried chicken. We hand batter every piece of chicken. We buy a fresh, all natural. We don't want a big bird. We don't want it to have anything in it that I wouldn't serve my nine year old. You want to turn some chicken? Here, why don't you use that one? It's hot as hell back there, hot as hell. The grease is spitting up out of the place where fried chicken is boiling. How many times have you been burned by oil? Yeah, I could tell. I was looking. Yeah. I wasn't willing to commit the way that he was willing to commit to get in there. They, they go away. Yeah? They go away. I don't tell him that. Hey, I think you've been lied to. That ain't never going away. Them dudes in the back was, was slaying that chicken, flipping the chicken. Whap, whap, whap. Whap, whap, whap. Y'all ready to go try some? I've been waiting for you to ask. All right, let's do it. I'm not a huge chicken guy, but this is probably the best fried chicken I ever tasted. See, I have a special relationship with chicken. OK, tell this, me about it. I love it. <laughs> I do, too. That's your relationship? Yeah. It's like, it's like you and pizza. 
Leave me alone. Good fried chicken got good skin. It's crispy and it's salty, but then when you get to the white part, it's juicy and the meat. And Gus had all of that. Holy oh, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just about. hit the fucking jackpot. Look at this piece. I'm very excited. This is definitely the best fried chicken I've ever had. Yes, Thank you. I'm gonna say that too. I'm sorry about all the napkins. No. There was three for my hand and the rest was for my head. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit of a sloppy eater. Matt is the messiest eater I've ever seen. I'm not like a pig. I don't have stuff hanging off my face, but I use a lot of napkins. How come I'm the only guy that's melting? How come I'm the only guy that melts? I melt We're eating the bit. same thing. Look I at me. No, I'm melting a little bit. Embarrassing. This chicken was spicy, so I, I sweat. I was, I was sweating like a motherfucker. I didn't want to order the pie, but I ordered the pie anyway just to try it. I get one scoop of it. Matt just pulls it to himself, starts eating the whole pie. The only thing that's not good is that Dean's double dipping, but besides that, it's delicious. <laughs> Next thing I know, he's got pie on his arm, like one arm. <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna try to just you guys, wipe it off. You got some chef pie. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but he's the messiest eater I've ever seen. What'd you say about the kids' menu? You got a bin? You got a bin with the kids' menu? All right, let's go. All right, what do we got, boss man? The first fight of the night is a girl named Pauline who came up with Ronda in the judo world. Oh, okay. She spent eight years at the Olympic training Judo's center. Judo's a rough sport, man. Yeah. I know, so you know she's gonna be tough. The girl she's fighting is 0-2 and, and she's 0-0. Oh. So I wanna be there for the first fight because I wanna see her. Now what about Danny Schell? He looks like he went to high school with, uh, with Longo. He looks like Boss Rutan. Midlife crisis? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's fighting somebody with no experience, but he's... He could have went to high school with his kids, but uh, what are you gonna do? <laughs> What's up, Mr. Shell? <laughs> hey, good to, good to see you. <laughs> Remember that time you grounded Bobby? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> work your ass over. All right. So what's interesting about this fight, Jonathan Jackson is 3-0, 30 years old, against Bobby Moffitt, who's 11-3. Why would they match up a guy who's 3-0 with, uh, with a guy who's 11-3, unless this guy's unbelievable or something? The one that we're really looking at is the main event. Joseph Lowry. Yeah. He's undefeated 7-0 against Zach Fierce, 9-2. I'm actually thinking if he wins and wants to turn around and fight again, I'd put him in the last episode of the Contender Series. Let's go see some fights. Yes! Yes! You want a damn chocolate? <laughs> Look how messy you are. Here we, get, here we got brought to me like this. <laughs> Go like this. No. <laughs> no. no. Turn no. it right here. <laughs> We're going to take him home and get him bathed up for the fights tonight. You know what's really bad? I was the only one on this side of the table, too. I can't even blame it on you guys. <laughs>
Yeah! Yeah! yeah. yeah. Ooh, cut him, oh, cut him, cut him. He's 44 years old. He fought a 28-year-old guy who split his fucking head open. Once the kid started letting loose and he started landing some nice elbows and the end was near. All right, end it. I give the guy all the credit in the world for going out there and getting inside that cage, but uh, young, fast, talented guys are in this game. It's not for older men. to be Penny Hardaway. Listen, when I was in high school, Penny Hardaway was the man. You live here in Memphis? I do. Yeah? Yeah, born and raised. That's cool. Oh, no yeah, shit, man. huh? Yeah, All right. You should come check out a UFC fight. Yeah, I should. Yeah. Anytime, yeah, man. man. Thank you. Have fun. Be All safe. Right, nice you. to meet you. There was this one fight where this girl was going for some nice leg locks, where I feel if they were in the training room, her opponent would have definitely tapped. Like, all right, you got me. I'm liking what I'm seeing on bottom. Look at this. She, don't, she might have her heel right here. She's trying yeah. to get a hold. Get a leg lock right here. <laughs> see, in a jiu-jitsu class, she would have tapped already. But that's the difference in MMA sometimes with these leg locks. Let's see. Look at this. You see? In class, she probably would have tapped. When you're going for these leg locks, if you're not finishing right away, you should use it to get on top and get a superior position for the fight. Now look at oh, that. Get she on goes. top with that shit, man. Oh, shit. There it is. That's a wrap. Uh, I want to show something to that girl that lost back then. Awesome. What, is, what do you do? What's your belt in jiu-jitsu? What do you do? Are you, are you belt, submission right? based, though? Yeah. Shit. You like attacking the legs? Yes. I'm going to go back to your locker room. I want to show you something. OK? When you're here, it's, and I know you like bringing it to the outside. Yeah. But when I'm here, and I, and I look like this, look how I'm pulling around to my own leg. The second you step here, I just get this knee going violently out this way. Now, you can still go through your legs. But if it doesn't work, you can use it to get on top. Right. I mean, yeah. if you don't win the fight from there, you're going to win the round. I'm starstruck. That was the first time I've ever had a an encounter or uh, advice or anything from a UFC star. Like, I can assure you I'm gonna be a leg lock monster after what he just showed me. Bobby Moffitt is a fighter that I had known from before. I had fighters fight him before and actually lose to him. The kid had a good record, good experience, beat a lot of good guys with, with good records. And for some weird reason, he was fighting a kid that was 3-0. and Whoa! It's a wrap. It's a wrap now. That's it. Got him. Total mismatch. Good win, man. Bobby Moffitt came out and made that guy look like he was 3-0. and I'm thinking about putting you in the Contender Series. Okay. You think you could turn around? Yeah. What, what, you think you could turn around for the end of this season? Yeah. And fight again? Well, end of July, I'm good. Huh? July? What is that? I think it's in August. August? I'm ready. Yeah? He destroyed him in the first round, so I'm going to bring him into uh, Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series. Right. Fuck, what's up, dude? Hi. Yo, you the coach? Yeah. Oh, shit, all right. It's all right there, man. Good to see you. On paper, Joseph Lowry and Zach Fears extremely evenly matched. I was really excited to watch this fight because I know this is the next generation of fighters, these evenly matched fighters that are winning fights against good opponents. I was really interested in Lowry, but Fears was very, very tough and had a good record too. So I figured, you know what? Whoever wins this fight, I'll bring into the contender series. He's better watch out for that overhand. It's going to find his home soon. Woo! Woo! That's more like. This kid's good. Oh, yeah, that eye is getting fucking busted. It was a tough fight, but Lowry looked awesome, man. He, he looked really good. It went four rounds. Lowry, three to one. Yeah, I think so also. Good fight, kid. What do you do with that? Put him in the contender series. Yeah. Hopefully he's OK and he's not hurt, because that was a war. Put him in like this summer? This season. 
Oh, really? Have him close the season as the main event. This kid's going to be here on looking for a fight. Then they contend the series. It's an amazing opportunity for him. What's up, man? What's up, dude? How you doing? Bro? Good. Good, Good to see you. Go. Congrats. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank no you pleasure. Much, Congrats. Great appreciate fight. It. I just Thank splashed you. all your sweat Thank right you. in my face. Congrats. <laughs> Congrats. Thank Congrats. You. Thank you, sir. Thank I'll see you guys in Vegas. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. I'm soaked now. Memphis is awesome. For people who've never been there, it's incredible. Graceland is there. Beale Street is incredible. The food is off the charts. B3 put on a great card down there. The venue was great. It was a fun night and a great night of fights.